Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating an invert color effect in Illustrator. In this video tutorial, we're going to have a look at creating an inverse effect in Illustrator. Now, I created the background that we're seeing here in another video. I've just simplified it a little bit to try and make it a little bit smaller so that this tutorial is going to go a little bit faster as I'm recording it. But you can see how to create a background like this in my video on creating texture backgrounds in Illustrator. Essentially what it is, is a plain layer with a layer of colored elements on top. So that's what this layer looks like. It's sort of a grunge look to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to place some text over the top of it. And the way I discovered this effect was I was actually working on this background. And look what happens when I select the text. The way Illustrator works is it, when you select text, inverts everything. So it's inverting not only the text, so the text is going from black to white, but it's also creating this sort of inverse overlay. And I just looked at that and thought that was a really interesting effect. And I wanted to do it more permanently because when I deselect the text, of course, I'm losing that effect. So the question then becomes, how can I create that inside Illustrator? The first thing we're going to do is to lock down our text so it's not going to walk around as we work. And I'm going to make a duplicate of this background layer. So I'm going to select the entire layer and I'm going to just drag and drop it onto this new icon here because that duplicates that background layer. And then I'm going to the original version and I'm going to lock it down so that it's not going to move as we work. I'm using the Select tool. I'm just going to click away from this so that we can see where we are right now. And we're going to work on this Layer 2 copy, which is a duplicate of the actual background layer. And I need to make the duplicate because I'm going to cut this into two pieces. So I'm going to grab my Rectangle tool now, and I'm just going to drag over this text to create a box that's going to be the size that I want to create for my invert effect or inverse effect. So I'm just going to create that rectangle and we can see that rectangle here. It's a rectangle that covers neatly the text that I want to add this effect to. So now I'm going to select my rectangle and the duplicate pieces of my background. And I'm going to use the Pathfinder to cut these pieces of the background to the size of the rectangle I just created. So I'm going to go and choose Window Pathfinder and get my Pathfinder dialog back up where I can see it. And in the Pathfinder dialog here, I'm just going to click Crop because what Crop does is it takes the topmost element, which is this rectangle here, and it crops away the rest of the selection from that area. Now the crop filter has run on my shape and if I turn off the full size background, you'll see that we have a piece of the background that is placed behind the text and it's exactly over the corresponding piece of the background and that's really important for this effect to look realistic. The next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and invert this shape or invert the colors in the shape to create our background. So I'm making sure that I'm selecting the shape that I want to invert the colors of and I do that by selecting Edit, Edit Colors and then Invert Colors. And that just reverses the colors to give us then this blue on orange look. Again, I'm going to click away from this shape so that we can see what we have. And when I turn the background back on, you'll see that we've got this inverse effect. And what I need to do now is just to cut out the pieces that I want. To do this, I'm going to continue with my other layers locked down because it's just going to make life a whole lot easier. And I'm going to create a rectangle over this area just to work out exactly how much space I need. So I'm just going to click and drag to create my rectangle. 
And I'm going to align it up with the edge of the underlying rectangle by selecting both these shapes and then select the Alignment option. So I'm going to click here to horizontally align left. And that will just make sure that they're lined up neatly. Let's go back to just working with this path. I'm going to duplicate this shape two more times. Just going to drag it onto the new icon to create my duplicates. And then I'm going to select each of these in turn and I'm going to move them down. I want to keep the height consistent because that's going to give me the look that I'm looking for. So I don't want to adjust the height, but obviously by the time I get this down over the word Illustrator, I'm going to have to make this a bit wider. So I'm just going to drag on this handle to make it wider. Now I'm going to repeat the process with the other shape. Now before I go any further, I'm going to turn my text into white type so we can just work out and make sure that these rectangles are all the size we want them to be. So let's go and unlock the text layer here, go and select the text and we're going to make it white. Now we can check to make sure that these rectangles are in the right position, but before I do that, I'm going to lock my text back up again. Now this is looking pretty good. I think I'm just going to move these just a little bit up and move this one just a little bit up as well. And I think each of these two bottom ones needs to be just a little bit longer. And if I'm happy with the shapes that I've created, I'm ready now to cut these out of the background. To cut these out of the background, I'm going to select all these three layers together and I'm going to make a compound path from them with Object, Compound Path and then Make. And that puts them all on a single path layer which is going to allow me to cut them out of the object behind. So I'm selecting not only these three blocks but also the group that is behind and now I'm going to click on the Crop Tool a second time. And now we've managed to cut these three pieces out of the background. And if I just click away from this, we have the inverse effect that we were looking for. We've been able to do this because Illustrator has a feature for inverting colors. And all we did was to invert not only a slice of the background, but also the color of the text to get this interesting effect. And because we were very careful about using the elements in place, you'll see that the background actually runs through these two pieces looking seamless. The only change is in the color, but the pattern itself is running seamlessly through the illustration. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.